Today I'm going to show you how to do this facade. I'm gonna do a tutorial from beginning to end uh, about how to create these uh, ribbons and how to create variations in the facade. I'm using Dynamo by selecting and uh, running Dynamo in automatic. Uh, I'm just selecting and let it create this variation. I have the minimum and maximum values there that I can change to choose how, how wide or close together are the ribbons. All that I do in Dynamo is just to use the select model elements. And if I choose to select only a certain area, I change only those elements. If I come here and I have make everything 7-7, seven, seven, I can get everything to be <coughs> the same. And if I come to the parameter shuffle and I switch it to true, it just shuffles around, creates a random. So it's very interesting with Dynamo, but I'm going to show you how to do it if you don't want to use Dynamo. I'm going to show you how to create a family and how to manipulate it just by selecting and, and changing instance parameters. If you look at different projects, there are many projects that use this technique. So to show you kind of result that I'm looking for. But back into Revit, let's try to do this and see trying to get the ribbons more spread out where I have windows closer together when I, I don't have a window and this can easily be done just by selecting the elements in the in front of the windows and letting Dynamo do its thing. The other way if you don't want to use Dynamo is that you just select the elements if I isolate the category it's easier to select but you just select the elements and I made it an array uh, parameter here that if you change to less they'll be far apart or if you increase the number they can be very close together anyway this is the family that I'm gonna show you how to create and then uh, I'll show you how to do the dynamo bit. So if I reset the temporary height and if I come here and create a new family, I'm going to start first with a metric generic model and I'm going to do something that I already have created. I didn't have to do it, but just to show you, I do use this family a lot. So it's worth to, to save just a simple box family um, because it's a form that you always use. But all that you have to do is create a few reference planes and create a few dimension parameters to change the scale and give these parameters. It can be width and length. And you just create an extrusion. Sorry, I keep using the shortcuts. I did an extrusion there. And you lock all these sketch lines. Once you do that, it means that you will be able to flex the, the parameters and flex the geometry. Sorry for being very basic today. Um, so you create another reference plane in, on an elevation. And if I use my align command, I can also lock this one and give it height parameter. All I have to do is load into my family that I started. I just call it seed box because it's seed family I, I can use and drag and uh, place very easily anywhere. I can use lock, I can create a bunch more of these to create different things. Uh, it's very all-purpose family. In the same way, I already have the one that I'm going to create now. It's this one. Uh, if you want to see how it works, I'll just load it as well. And what I do is I have a family that very easily you can drag, stretch, and it will keep creating more ribbons 
but I'll show you how to do this one here. So after you place one of these, you want to lock it in probably this dimension. Let's do something different here. This dimension is this 500 here. No, this is the height, sorry. That's 500 height. That's that one. What you should do is just use the same parameter, just nest them so that they change at the same time. This will work for now. And the height, let's not worry about it yet. Well, we did do a height parameter, so we can use it. What I'm going to do now is do the select this one and do an array and use this last. So I'm gonna lock it here. Just edit the group and use the align to make sure it's locked to that last reference plane. This array then we can select the, the array dimension and give it a parameter as well. What it means is that if we, if we give the array a different number they grow in the middle because we use this one as the last one. So what we want to do now is make sure it has a material. It's nice to have a material here. Because we're going to use it, but we have this family. So this is a family that we can do that that we showed before. Uh, the only difference from that one is that this one, when we drag, it creates more elements. In this case, I'm actually going to do undo because what I was using there was that I had an instance parameter to change the number of elements, not they wouldn't change by the width of the of the the whole thing. So this is the way I want it. So I will create now another yet another family. I'm gonna do new family and I'm gonna do a metric curtain panel curtain wall panel. Is I'm going to load this one into that second. I should start naming families. It should be easier. So I'll just save as curtain wall panel ribbons. So now this one, I'm going to place it here. I could do this, something like this, and in elevation. So the height, I would want it to be equal to this panel height. Now in a curtain wall panel, we have to make this parameter. We have to make it reporting parameter because we can't change it. It will be changed by the curtain wall grid. But I can then say that the height is that same one and it will be exactly the same. What I would like to do here, uh, if you notice, when this curtain wall is placed, curtain panel is placed on a curtain wall, you'll see that the next one would be there and the next one would be there. And this is not what we want. We don't want them to line up here. We want to be the spacing be between these two as well. So it means that I have to make sure that this spacing is the same between the reference plane and the last ribbon. The way that I'm going to do is come back edit this one. And uh, if I could use a reference in the middle. So I'm going to create here another one. Dimension this. To make this equal and here where I had this one locked I'm gonna lock it to this one edit group and now lock it here so if I load it back it's in a different place now just gonna place it again I'm just gonna lock it to this middle one so now when it this changes now this is always locked to the middle and the formula that we need, if we think, I'll create just reference lines here just for us to see. 
what we would want is this to be equal like this so the dimension that should be here should be this one 500 in this case and the number of times this is divided is one two three four five six although this one the the array is five because it has one two three four five ribbons but we know that this cap here where the distance between where this ends and the reference plane and the boundary of the curtain wall panel we know that needs to be this one so if the o length is l i think we called it the panel length it's something it's l minus 200 times 2. so what are we going to do i'm going to say that this panel this length here it's a new parameter panel length this length here I didn't call it anything yet that's good enough remember it needs to be reporting so the panel length needs to be the length divided by how many times we saw here it was six we want to say that this 2600 the panel length is equal to the length minus these two sides so these two sides should be this width actually and this width is not 200 this width is the length divided by six or if i'm going fast but i always need to stop a little bit to think because i've done it before i'm doing it faster but that length is length minus length divided by six but six is not really six because it's the array the array that keeps changing so we need the array here that we don't have it yet so apologies i need to come here and make this a parameter in this family too so it's not actually six it's array and another heads up is that this is not divided equally because we also have this thickness when this one moves there it will move to the middle it means that half this thickness is to this side and half this thickness to that side so it means that the dimension that we want here we actually need to take it off half thickness plus half thickness so one all thickness so how do we do that if we have this thickness it's 100 we'd want to use this one as well so it's not just that it's we have to do length divided there minus that thickness so before we subtract we have to do all this calculation so i'm going to put in side parentheses before i was saying that it would come here but for this to start here and end there it would be minus two uh, of these sides not only minus one in fact this is what we want we want just half this side the other half is going to be on that side so this equal one that we have is not really what we want it's actually that this 600 will be from here to that other next panel so the formula is correct just like this i don't need those um, and we have our panel give it the material parameter here but yeah this is it we, we have our curtain panel now we just load it into the project and you'd create a wall would create a new curtain wall and this new curtain wall let's make it smaller this new curtain wall if you come to the curtain panel we could name the one could select the one that we just did ribbons one and you'd say the grid spacing could be a random number but let's do it like that so we have our family here and uh, if you see what's happening is that we have each one of these is a panel and if we want to change the ones that are more spaced we can do it manually just by changing the array so this is all that i did you could go one by one if you didn't want to use dynamo 
and just change it to 8 or to 7, I don't know. And change the next one to 6. So you could also change this uh, spacing by changing the grids. Uh, it gives you a bit of flexibility to do these in, this in different ways. It would definitely work without using Dynamo as well. But because I wanted to create this, uh, make this more flexible, that if you only have a facade, doesn't matter. But if you have a building with loads of this, be able to quickly analyze uh, different variations that you don't think of by your own mind. For instance, if I created this with a random parameter from Dynamo, uh, I wouldn't think of it. I just create random run it again and achieve a different result, run it again and run it again and keep looking for a preferred one. If I don't want to run the variation, random variation everywhere, I select just a little bit, run it there, I still have control to change the way I want, but it, I don't have to be selecting panels one by one. So in the next video I'm going to do a quick video just to show you how to do the dynamo bit is not very complicated. I'm gonna do it on a separate video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.